Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to be working on a Hitachi HA270. Um, I don't know what's wrong with this thing, whether um, it's, there's nothing wrong with it at all, or it has no output whatsoever, or only one channel works, or distorted, or whatever. I've got no idea. I'm going to repair this thing, and I'm actually giving this to somebody as a gift. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do, I have a variable isolation transformer hooked up now, which is actually the proper way to do things. And then I'm going to go ahead and slowly uh, turn up the line voltage and see what happens, monitor everything, see if it's not um, drawing too much current. My uh, isolation transformer, you can actually see how much current is being drawn. So let me go ahead and turn this thing on. I've got the ready the amplifier switch already in the on position. So I should hear a relay click sometime. There it goes right there. And it's not drawing very much current. It's under a hundred milliamps. So Looks like there's nothing unusual going on, so now I'm going to be off to my next test, which is going to be, I'm going to be checking for um, DC voltage at the speaker outputs. You want to have basically down to zero, because um, this is not a transformerless type, uh, excuse me, this is not a transformer type, or, so now I'm ready for the test. I've got the the um, multimeter leads, of course, alligator clips here on any of these leads, hooked up to the other side of the speaker terminal. And this is just a safer way of doing things. That way you don't uh, inadvertently slip like I have before. Uh, there are certain, uh, certain amps and receivers that can take a short, but I wouldn't want to... Uh, place any bets on it since uh, that has happened to me before and uh, actually more than once so um, now I'm gonna go ahead and turn the variable isolation transformer back up do I have the amp on yep and um, then I'm gonna go ahead and see what's uh, what's up <clears throat> so Again, I'm looking for basically down to zero DC voltage. Okay, relay clicked in. <clears throat> okay, well that's just um, <clears throat> that's just fine. So let me go ahead and do the other um, channel. Shut everything off again. So here we go again. I don't need to turn up the isolation transformer up any uh, more like I did last time. I've already got it preset. Okay, excellent. So, um, good. That settles that. Everything seems to be okay there. And of course we want to remove all of this dust here off the heat sink and especially off the transistor since the dust here acts as an insulator and it's going to make the transistors run hotter and heat is not a friend of transistors. I'm just going to go ahead and use uh, alcohol and swabs or, or at least these large areas I could probably use a kitchen towel or something like that, a paper towel and then get the fine stuff with the uh, swab so I end up cleaning everything up a little bit here I got all the dust out of here and I cleaned all of the switches and potentiometers I couldn't get to every single one but the one that was I was most concerned about it seemed like the balance control had some um, scratching on it I got that one quite good so I'm gonna go ahead and fire it up now and then go from there Go ahead and turn the 
got the receiver on. I'm using the isolation transformer again, a variable one. And let me bring this up. Okay, there's a relay clicking. And now I'm going to go ahead and feed in a tone. What I'm doing now is basically I'm going to use my phone to feed in a signal. I think I've got it hooked up to the to the tuner input. I could use a tuner aux or phono. Um, easy as always aux or tuner input. And I'm going to be using a basically a this here is a um, what is it? A yeah test tone generator app what I'm going to use so I'm going to go ahead and feed in a sine wave and frequency is going to be a thousand Hertz and let me turn the volume down before I do anything and let's have at it here okay let me just try the right channel So the next thing I want to do is adjust the bias current before I tackle the uh, bad lamp problem, bad bulb problem. Um, here there's actually four emitter resistors here. Um, these are directly connected to the four power output transistors, two for each channel of course. And here you're supposed to set this for, I think it's, what you're doing is measuring the voltage across these resistors. Um, you're going to have to take one measurement for each channel and then there's a little here's a potentiometer here that needs to be um, turned. It's a voltage regulator here and there's another one over here and that's supposed to be set for you're supposed to read 8 millivolts um, DC and um, what I'm going to do is now I've got the leads already hooked up here. I can only show one channel because the other ones are harder to get to and the camera is just going to get in the way. So um, I'm going to turn this on now and see what this, basically see what this is. Let me go ahead and get, uh, of course you have to leave of the <clears throat> the amplifier is going to have to be on it says leave it on for about five minutes for everything to stabilize so I'm going to go ahead and do that and come back in a second so the amps now had a little bit of time to stabilize and you can see it's here it's uh, 9.8 uh, millivolts which um, is still within the limits it's supposed to be like from Eight plus or minus four. I think I'm just gonna turn it down real, a really a tiny tad. Um, the <clears throat> of course the amp over the years, I've if the components have you know changed or drifted a little bit, that's gonna change the values of this. And personally, I think if I you know if I change any any output transistors or driver transistors I think this should be done anyways then um, so if I've got the if I had the say 8 millivolts and of course I'm adjusting the uh, idle current and um, that's supposed to be translated to a current measurement of course what I'm just simply doing is I'm taking measuring the voltage across that resistor if it was 8 millivolts <clears throat> and then I would divide that by the uh, emitter resistor resistance which is 0 0.22 I think ohms and that actually I just did it on the calculator that would bring me around up to 36 milliamperes and it says here it's supposed to be around 40 so that's kind of like a, a ballpark figure so that's exactly what that is supposed to be supposed to be at I got a in order to do this adjustment I got to shut the camera off because that's just going to be in my way and I don't want the camera falling over into the unit. 
So as you can see, I pretty well got this thing on point. So, um, actually, so I think I'm going to leave it at that. You want the idle current set right. You don't want to have any kind of uh, crossover distortion. And or I think it's also they call it notch distortion. Because um, that's basically... If that exists, you can hear it at at low. You'll be able to hear that at low levels, and that will be kind of irritating. But I have had some where I've actually hooked up the scope, and uh, no matter what setting you put the uh, this adjustment to, you still didn't see any um, any type of crossover distortion. So now I'm off to my next little project here, and that is the bulbs. In order to do that. Since I'm going to go ahead and replace both of the bulbs, since one's going to have, it's not going to be as bright as the other one. I don't think I have the exact same ones. The ones in here, I looked here, they're axial type, um, meaning they got the connections are at either end. They're not like the radial types, which would be like that, you know, like a regular bulb. So, um, for that, the front plate, unfortunately, has to come off here. And I took that off. It's all the, all these knobs just pull off, and these uh, switch covers just pull off. And now I got to take a closer look at what's on the other side of this, and then see how I can get this uh, get this out here. Put that. I, I got to shut this camera off because that's in the way again. In case you're wondering how I'm getting this off here, what I'm doing is. Uh, I can't seem to get the whole assembly off here, so what I'm doing is just like a um, foil tape on here. I got that loose here with a little toothpick, and then I started uh, using the tweezers to pull it apart step by step so I can keep it in one piece. I've got one side done now. Now I'm on to the other side here. I got to do them both in order to, in order to separate order to separate this here and I th I'm not even sure I think this down here the whole assembly might be glued in up here but I'm gonna go ahead and try this method here wonder why they made it so difficult so and there it is and you can see here that I managed to keep the pieces of foil intact I'm gonna try to glue them back on here and um, now for the bulbs I think this one here was bad I'm gonna check that again with the multimeter but I'm I'm pretty sure it's bad because uh, both of the power meters are working now and uh, there's only a total of four four uh, wires going to this thing and I'm sure they're getting their power too or else the meters wouldn't be working <coughs> And the one on the right is uh, supposedly bad or is bad. Okay, multimeter's not registering anything. Now this one here. Okay, this one's good. I think these are 12 volts and either 50 or 55 milliamp pairs. But I don't I don't have these actual type of bulbs here. Um I'm not even sure if I could. I'm not even sure if I could get them. I looked before online. They only had like eight, eight volters. Um, then you'd have to put some some kind of a dropping resistor in. It's all too much of a hassle. So I'm going to see if I can't get uh, just two regular radio type bulbs put in there. Let me see what I got. So I'm ready to get back on this project here. I managed to pick up two bulbs. These are. 12 volts 50 milliamperes and the originals I believe were 55 milliamperes 12 volts of course they're not like these here these are the original these are axial ones and you can see also these covered by some kind of plastic I just didn't want to um, pay that much I did manage to find them somewhere I think it was on eBay somewhere I didn't want to pay that much so I got these. I'm going to get these to work too. I've already got, uh, of course, the old one unsoldered. So I'm going to solder the 
new ones in. And there's new bulbs in position. Let me put the front plate back on and see how everything looks. And here we go. And you don't see the bulbs either, although these are radio type of bulbs. I thought it might be sticking out a little bit. And um, that was it. When I put it back together, I had put that what I I put some more um, clear tape, scotch tape, to hold the two parts together here because the old silver tape there that when I tried to put it back on, it didn't. It, some of it held, some of it didn't. So I just ran a couple pieces of more tape across in the back, and that should do it.